All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the PacView and Bobsled webinar for where Instacart fits in your brand's marketplace strategy. I'm Lewis, an account director here at PacView, and I'm joined with uh, Stefan Jordiv from Bobsled. Hi, everyone. Um, so our agenda today, what we're going to be discussing are um, just kind of Insta Instacart today, where what the status of Instacart is and current um, strategies and benefits, how to maximize growth, key drivers, measuring success, and then at the end we'll have a, a Q&A where we can get all your questions answered. Um, about PacView. PacView is a, a best-in-class enterprise solution that advertisers use um, on um, Instacart and multiple other e-commerce advertising channels. We're a platform used by agencies, brands, and sellers, and it allows you to combine your holistic performance data as well as recommended actions to take on your advertising campaigns. Thanks, Luke. A few words about Bobsled. We are an Amazon-focused digital agency established in 2015. We, of course, support Walmart and Instacart as well. We work with third-party sellers. We work with vendors. We work with hybrid accounts, meaning accounts that have both a seller central and a vendor central account. We're thought leaders in the space, including a weekly Forbes column owned by our CEO, Kiri Masters. And we have been named as one of the top 18 Amazon solution providers by Business Insider recently. And we do have an upcoming book on Instacart titled Instacart for CMOs coming up in less than a week. The launch date is March the 10th. I do hope you check it out. It features a lot of expert insights from many experts in the industry, including PacView's co-founder and president, Melissa Burdick. Just search for Instacart for CMOs on Amazon and you should be able to pre-order it today. And yeah, we can talk about where Instacart is today before taking a look at what the future might hold for it. And on the next slide, we have a few numbers for you. Um, we will be talking about its potential a lot, but just taking a look uh, at a snapshot of Instacart's current situation um, has some impressive numbers to show us. With consistent investment efforts, Instacart is now available to about 85% of the US households and about 70% of the Canadian households. I, I don't have that number in here, but uh, it's about 70% of, of shoppers in Canada. Uh, they have more than 500 million products available. Uh, these products are available in store to their more than 500 now partners. And they have more than half a million shoppers working on Instacart. So some pretty impressive numbers when we take a look at Instacart's potential at the moment. And the pandemic has affected all aspects of our lives and grocery shopping hasn't been an exception. Um, a lot of shifts happening here as well, with about 22% of Americans have shifted from weekend to weekday shopping runs, and more and more of them are placing orders during working hours. So I'm sure this is a trend shift that Instacart appreciates, as it will even out the high order days, and it will just give Instacart shoppers a good chance of meeting their two-hour delivery targets without too much effort or, or too much hustle compared to previously when it was all concentrated in week weekends. A lot of brands have been uh, wondering about what happens to e-commerce grocery once the pandemic uh, ends. And I think a lot has been written on this topic throughout 2020. I think every piece of research published lately, including the one we're featuring here on the slide, indicates that the e-commerce grocery is here to stay beyond the pandemic. Um, we even see the category growing, and I think in short, customers will continue to shop online and retailers and manufacturers will continue to invest in e-commerce. I think this is where it becomes more of um, a benefit and a convenience thing than anything the pan 
compared to anything the pandemic might might have driven until now. And in this slide, we're featuring an illustration about how the pandemic has not only shifted, but also accelerated some online habits for us. Uh, 2021 shopping habits are where we initially expected them to be four years from now. We, these are where we initially saw them being in 2025. So um, today, customers are more driven by values and purpose. So this is definitely something that brand managers will have to solve for and have to find a solution for. And basically, brands will have to find a way to be where their customers are instead of being where they want them to be whether that's in-store, whether it's online or any online marketplace they choose to do business on in the future. So uh, I guess this is where the omni-channel uh, comes into play for a lot of brands. And I think we, we covered a lot of Instacart's potential and its growth uh, so I just wanted to uh, include a few challenges, a few threats that are lurking around Instacart to just call out a few. I think the first is a pretty big one. Retailers developing their own platform has been a challenge, has been a threat that has followed Instacart since its introduction. Um, the possibility of being too slow to win advertising share, I think this one, especially as it connects to the first one, they only have the featured products as a standalone service at the moment. So if they don't make any moves, if they don't get more additional advertising dollars going towards the platform, that's a potential threat for Instacart's growth. Uh, staying profitable might be considered a threat for Instacart as it is a threat for the entire category of online grocery. I don't think the profits are, are too big when it comes to the category as a whole. And Instacart themselves, have not published too many profitable months, I believe. Um, Instacart, uh, Instacart's gig workforce, I include this as a threat because it is being considered a threat because Instacart has taken some criticism about its employee status, employees' wages. So this might be something we should be keeping an eye on. Awesome, Stefan. Well, as you guys, um, so on Instacart, there's multiple different ad types that are available. Um, we have currently four, four different ad types. As Stefan mentioned on the previous slide, the standalone offering for is featured products. And featured products is what um, you're allowed to, for an API partner like PackView to connect to and manage your advertising campaigns um, for you through Instacart. So there's a lot, there's automation tools out there like PackView that you can log in and, and manage your your ad management and campaigns through PackView. Feature products is a lot like sponsor products on other retailers. Um, it's it's very similar to the, the paid search um, option. Um, the four uh, other ones are coupons, um, the hero banner, and then there are delivery promotions as well. But those uh, coupons, hero banner, and delivery promotions, those are managed um, solely on Instacart's platform um, through their um, UI, through their service. So feature products is standalone and you can use an API partner too help you manage that and um, set up automation. Um, there's three different placement types within feature products. Um, the first is search. So search, as you can see in this slide, is where you know you type in um, any, for example, it says pizza, you type in pizza, and then the top uh, featured spots, those are the paid search placements under the featured product. So like I said, very similar to what sponsored products is on other platforms. It's just very key. It's keyword based and it relates to the search term or keyword that you've typed in in the search bar. The next one is browse. Browse is when um, you can, you know, you're browsing through the, the platform and you'll have the similar, the uh, placements show up as well. Anything that says featured above it is obviously what is a featured um, product under the paid search. And lastly is buy it again. So if you, um, you know, buy products on Instacart, when those products show up to be purchased again, you will have um, additional products here under the featured section that will be relatable to the products that you've recently purchased or purchased in the past. So again, to kind of recap here, um, you'll have search, brow uh, search placements, browse placements, and buy it again. All pretty self-explanatory on um, where they're going to show up, but those are the three placements that you'll get under the um, featured products placement. Um, and it's not so 
Instacart is kind of, you know, it's there's a, a misconception that it's solely for, you know, CPG and groceries. And there's been a lot of growth outside of those um, categories. For example, Best Buy is now available on Instacart. So you can literally go on to Best Buy through Instacart and have a TV delivered in, you know, um, that time frame. And it's been a big benefit to a lot of early adopters that I've seen in this space. There's been a couple um, high value CE brands that have um, advertised their TV selections on Best Buy and um, seen a lot of success there. So the consumer electronics space is, is very valuable for this Best Buy option. And it's not just including on the grocery um, retailers as well. Uh, and next here, a been explosive growth in the pet category. So this is a, um, this is very awesome for Petco. So you can go on here to Instacart, do your pet orders, pet food orders, very competitive with um, Chewy and Amazon. Um, so again, like I said, outside of the grocery and CPG categories, you have pets, dog food at Petco, you have Best Buy. Um, and then lastly, we also have beauty for Sephora. So you can now, you know, um, if you're if you're a beauty brand, if you're a pet brand, if you're um, a CE brand, you can take advantage of Instacart's offering as well as be an early adopter and take advantage of these um, advertising promotions and advertising spots and um, capture some low hanging fruit. So um, to kind of recap here again, it's it's a big growth opportunity on Instacart for consumer electronics, pet brands as well as as beauty brands as well. Um, okay, so next we're going to talk about um, maximizing your growth using, um, you know, search and, and using Instacart. Um, the, first, um, the first ability to maximize growth is the top of search import, importance, right? This is very similar to top of search on any other retailer, right? The top placements are where all, almost all cl ad clicks take place. So as you can see here, 90% of ad clicks take place on the top three placements. The top three placements are the most valuable. That's where everyone wants to show up. So capturing that market share is extremely important. Um, additionally to that, 40% of all clicks um, on the results, including organic search results. So um, the top placements when you're using featured products, that's very, very important to capture that market share. And you know, using tools like um, PackView's automation features really allows you to capture that type of placement. So you're not on your own. Well, uh, there's tools out there in the market like PackView that can help you capture that market share and, and ensure that you're um, placing in those top three placements. Instacart covers, um, you know, various channels with assortment um, across, uh, type, you know, many different price points. So you can break out your campaigns by ASP and package size, for example. Um, and then you, the idea is that you can um, you can bid while keeping efficiencies um, high, and then increase as your price point increases as well. So you can use hyper segmentation here too to drive efficiencies. There's lots of different SKU segmentation you can um, offer on on um, Instacart that allows you to. Um, segment your SKUs and drive um, different price points and increase conversions. Uh, bidding competitively. So this is very valuable because we're going to tell you within within Instacart um, where your bid strength is. So how high, you know, how is your bid strength low? Meaning, are you bidding too low? Is it average? Are you bidding high? You're going to be able to see what your bid strength is. And then you're able to see what the hourly changes are to the competitive landscape. So you're able to come in here, um, set up default bids um, to negative targeting, as well as find out when, you know, a lot of retailers won't show you what your bid strength is. This is pretty unique to Instacart. And I think it's a very valuable feature because you're not in the dark when you're setting up all your default bids on your keywords and search terms. So you're able to see what your bid strength is to know if you're bidding too high, if you're overspending, or if you're bidding too low and not capturing enough market share because your bids are too low. So being able to bid competitively and have the bid strengths within Instacart is an extremely valuable feature. And it's one of the um, one of my favorite features um, within Instacart's platform. PackView also brings us into our platform too and allows you to automate a lot of your bid changes as well. I'm so glad I get to own this slide in particular. Um, I think this is a very important point I wanted to highlight here. 
Instacart advertising offers a lot more than just ROI. And, and to be clear, ROI on Instacart is great at the moment. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's better compared to any other marketplace, um, compared with any other marketplace, including Amazon or Walmart. But I think the real value comes with, with this. By a customer's 10th order, 25% of all your conversions are from the your items or the buy it again aisle. And this is basically repeat purchases. So even though you're advertising and generating a lot of great sales from advertising, ultimately you might be getting organic sales that were initially influenced by that advertising efforts for months to come. So I think this is a huge important to have in mind and want to factor in as you're discussing advertising budget and making decisions about the budget invested on Instacart advertising. And a few strategy points behind the advertising talk, uh, tactics we talk about here today. Uh, day parting, this is a bit controversial, even on Amazon at the moment. I mean, people, advertisers are using it and, and some are just against using it at the moment. But with the stats included here, uh, with stats from Instacart showing us the best days or even the best times of the day to make a purchase on Instacart, Advertisers may capitalize on this by using and implement, uh, imp implementing day parting as a tactic within their advertising efforts. Um, Instacart is no exception when it comes to the importance of testing and just testing and expanding on the visibility of the keywords within your campaigns. Basically, that's the whole foundation of optimizing for optimizing the feature products as a core aspect of Instacart's uh, advertising at the moment. And then, of course, monitor your competition, just taking a look at the share of voice or the share of shelf as it comes to Instacart, it can be a great source of insight for your brand. Just monitor your share of shelf can help you learn where your brand is uh, on the competitive landscape and can help you strategize on your next move here. So if you're searching for a given keyword, if you're searching for a given keyword within a single retailer, par uh, retailer partner that is listed on Instacart, you might be able to see how much share of shelf you own for that particular keyword. And a few tips for launching new products on Instacart. I have to start by saying this is a bit of a challenge because this is something that the retailers own. They're the ones that are providing the UPCs to Instacart and this is how products find themselves listed there. But when it comes to what a brand can do and what the advertising strategy behind launching a new product on Instacart can be, it comes with identifying your budget, learning more about your audience, and just looking at that incrementality that optimizing your listing and product content can give you. So when it comes to talking about budget and making budget decisions, you might focus on expanding the reach that your products have within the category, and of course, you might focus on building your brand and any, any volume of search that comes related to your brand on Instacart. When it comes to learning the insights of your audience or just looking to learn more about who your potential target audience might be, tracking that share of shelf for your brand, tracking share of shelf for competitor brands, even generic keywords can help you measure and then optimize accordingly, seeing where that audience is and what your next move can be in terms of which keywords I wanna go after, how do I wanna target this potential target audience and just make, uh, make more data-driven decisions better. And then when it comes to optimizing the product name, description and images on Instacart, this is another aspect that I wanted to highlight. Uh, it's at the moment, although I do think it's being released really soon, at the moment, brands are not able to update product listings on Instacart without the assistance of a third-party tool. So a lot of brands have been using uh, product information management software to update this. This is how it's being done on Instacart at the moment. As I said, I do think this will change maybe within the month. And when it comes to owning this product listing, owning the content that's being included on Instacart, I think the brands are the best, uh, the best place ones to own this. And when we talk about the key drivers of demand generation, Instacart has a few drivers that actually lead to its own flywheel effect. And we'll see what it is in a second. 
basically Instacart's flywheel effect on its own comes down to the repeat purchases. 90% of Instacart customers are repeat customers and, nine, uh, and 20 to 25% of Instacart shopping activities comes from repurchasing. So this can be considered Instacart, Instacart's flywheel effect. And when we factor in the SEO, the optimizing for search, the promotions, the product content, the advertising, they all lead to this effect where you are able to generate additional uh, repeat purchases for free coming to you organically. Uh, when we talk about Instacart search algorithm, this is a very interesting one. This is definitely something I've asked Pacu a few times about and if they've heard anything. And it turns out that Instacart are actually very transparent when it comes to how their search algorithm works. And basically, Instacart search algorithm has two main pillars, fulfillment and search and personalization. And it's a very complex algorithm because Instacart's algorithm actually goes in and checks inventory levels across all of their retail partners. And then it lets you know the product is available near that zip code you're searching for or it isn't. And another interesting thing I wanted to uh, highlight, because I think this might be something that becomes very, very interesting in the future. If a product is not available, Instacart has a replacement recommendation model. So if you're unable to find a product you're searching for, Instacart will give you a suggestion. And I just think this is a very competitive and interesting area. And I'm sure brands will be looking to get into more and possibly Instacart might be even interested in monetizing this. And of course, Instacart's algorithm is location-based. You include your zip code when you log into Instacart and every search you make is dependent on availability of products uh, close to that zip code and will Instacart be able to fulfill it? So when it comes to uh, driving repeat purchases, uh, basically, uh, we have to factor in the budget, uh, the budget, the audience, and the incrementality, similar to that previous slide we have. Um, even if the uh, ROAS is lower than expected at this given time, um, we have to factor in that there's a branding play that comes to this. Uh, it's not uh, even if you're advertising on online, on Instacart, or any other marketplace. Uh, the effect is being, is being included uh, in offline purchases as well. And audiences do uh, get more informed and start to recognize your brand more. And basically, whenever you're driving these initial purchases, initial sales on Instacart, you do have that option for future upsells, for future cross-sells, or just repeat purchases that Instacart will, uh, will provide to you. As I mentioned, when it comes to optimizing content, this is an interesting one. Instacart does not have a self serve content management system, and Instacart actually charges retailers a setup fee to upload product content. So I think having a relationship with the retail partners is an interesting place for brands to be in because you will definitely want to reach out to your retailers to check if your products are being included on Instacart, if those UPCs have been delivered to Instacart, and you might want to check if the uh, you might want to check if the product content included on that product detail page represents what Instacart uh, should be uh, should be saying for your product. Um, I'm, as I mentioned, a few tools have been used at the moment. I think Salsify is one that does a good job at optimizing product content. So if you're eager to get ownership of what your products that are associated with your brand on Instacart are stating and have the content at the moment, this might be a solution that brands uh, look into. And coupons and delivery promotions, I am including these because as Luke said, these are not self-serve, they're managed uh, by Instacart. They sometimes require a larger portion of the budget to be dedicated towards them, but they can play a role even when it comes to the click-through rate, conversion rate, as it relates to feature products or simply browsing on Instacart. So having a coupon running when advertising a feature product, as the screenshot below illustrates, it will add more relevancy and it might give the potential customer uh, an additional reason to click on this product and ultimately to purchase this product. 
And of course, delivery options are one of the four available promotional options that Instacart offers. <laughs> I do think that they've fallen behind with the entire pandemic throughout last year. Great. So now what we're going to discuss is um, how to measure success and, and what channels and what levers you can pull to decide if you're having success on Instacart and, and tracking performance correctly. The first is leveraging SOV data. So what SOV is, is a share of voice. This is very similar to like uh, share of shelf. And what you can do within um, the tool or with a tool like PathView is you can monitor your share of voice by tracking your high performing keywords as well as your branded search terms and brand name to find out how you're placing amongst all of your competition on Instacart. So you can tell how much market share you have within those search results versus your, your, your competition. So you can see where your competitors have weaknesses as well as where you have weaknesses in terms of um, keyword strength and the ability to own market share for the most placements um, in the search and browse pages. So another big benefit to this too is to um, find and eliminate adjacent brand noise. So you can find out, you know, if your brands are, you know, your your child brands are competing with each other, um, as well as which market share your brands have versus, um, you know, the competition. And then the big benefit too here is tracking progress, right? So this is how you would measure success if you started out using um, you know, a feature products advertisement campaign and your share of voice was you know, 5% and then that organic grew to 8% a month after you started these campaigns, you could then you know, kind of attribute that success to creating those campaigns. So being able to track and leverage that share of voice data and knowing how much market share you have and your brand has for the keywords that are most important to your brand is very, very important because the larger your share of voice, that means the more placements you have and the more opportunity a consumer has to click on your ads. So anytime you're gaining share of voice, anytime you're gaining market share and you're adding more placements for a consumer to click on, the better. And anytime you're losing that, that's a very um, big red flag in an area to be cause for concern. So leveraging that SOB data and monitoring that is probably one of the most important things that you can do when tracking your, your success and progress using um, advertising campaigns and paid search campaigns. Um, next is gaining uh, market share. So there's a couple of ways to do this. So obviously number one, creating really aggressive um, budgets and, and bid, bid um, amounts on to, to gain those top places, right? I think we said the 90% of clicks came from the top three ad placements um, within a campaign or within a search browse page. So if you have you know, if you manage your budgets correctly, you can, um, you know, distort the budget to have more impact and, and gain those higher impact placements. So getting the, your products to surface in those top three advertisement placements on the featured um, browse page or search page is very, very important. Um, you can also own the aisle with reserve hero banners. So anytime you, you know, it's one of those other products that we offered where you have the hero banners that really show that it's across the top of the of the page. And basically you own that, you know, it's almost like you have a billboard um, of your products in a shopping aisle in, in, in retrospect. So you could have your own, you know, billboard owning the whole aisle when someone's searching for products that are very relative to what your brand offers. Um, another one is incrementality here. So what you can do is basically you can co-brand um, and combine um, products. So you can basically, let's say, for example, chips and dips. So you can basically, if you're a chip brand, you could partner with a, um, a salsa brand or a chip dip brand, and you guys could um, create uh, co-branding where you're, you're offering products together. And it uh, allows you to really set yourself apart from, from competition in the, the placement uh, within the site of Instacart. So um, Alfred Hero banners where you can own the whole aisle, um, monitoring your budget and um, offering the top placements on advertising as well as co-branding with other brands to um, bring your, your products to life and, and be creative and, and stand out from other competitors is, is the three places that you can really gain the most, most market share on Instacart right now. Um, that should do it. So I think what we'll do now 
is we will wrap up the conversation and we'll go with um, um, a little bit of discussion here. So Stefan, I believe there's a couple of just questions here for you. Um, you know, one being, where do you think Instacart is headed in the next five years? It's a pretty big question, but I, I feel like they are definitely expanding on the industry verticals they're working with. I think you mentioned it on the slide, which featured their partnership with Best Buy. There will definitely no longer be the grocery platform. There will probably be the platform where you order everything. I still think they continue to be a partner to the stores they're working with at the moment, as opposed to becoming a seller or a retailer partner themselves. Um, I think we all read the news and I think we were all very interested when they announced they're looking to hire or purchase or just develop their own micro fulfillment center. So they will be already owning some inventory, but I just think that Instacart finds a way to improve delivery times, uh, be that last mile delivery partner to online grocery or any type of other partners and just continue on adding products, adding categories and adding assortment and trying to get a market share, a bigger market share with that approach. Awesome. And next is what is the first step brand should take when getting started with Instacart? I would say the first step that brands would take would be to have a conversation with retailers and their partners where products are being sold. I think we mentioned this a couple of times throughout the presentation, but retailers are a key stakeholder when it comes to Instacart. They have the inventory and they have the product availability. I mean, they own it. They're the ones that are providing that data to Instacart. So, mm -hmm. I mean, having that conversation with your retail partners, maybe doing a simple search on Instacart yourself to see if your products are are already available would be the very first steps I would take. And you know, once those products, if I find out that the products are being included on Instacart, are being available, it's going to come down to figuring out who will own Instacart within your company and starting to dedicate some budgets behind it. Yeah, great. And in the earlier slides, we kind of discussed, you know, um, other retailers on Instacart like Best Buy, Petco, Sephora, et cetera. So, you know, for those brands that are in the consumer electronics space, the beauty space, the pet care space and other retailers, um, and they're now on Instacart, what the, should they be thinking? Do you think it's too early for them to be getting started? It, it, it might be, but it might be the advantage that comes with it. I mean, it's it's a CPC based platform, like there are competitive offers uh, yeah. when it comes to whose product will be displayed there. And I think you can only gain by being among the first ones to market. I think this was a major point that Pac you had when we started discussing about the profitability of Instacart. You know, if you're the first one there, your CPC rates are great, your ROI is great. So I, I think all these marketplaces when they're CPC and auction based platforms being among the first ones there's, I mean, brands can only gain from it, right? Yeah. Yep. I, I totally agree. Being an early adopter. And I think we've said it three or four times in this, in this um, presentation that capturing the top three placements um, in the search and, and browse pages is, is the most effective, right? 90% of clicks come from those top three spots. Well, if you're on one of those retailers that, there's no saturation and there's no competition and you can easily capture those top three spots um, with a low CPC cost. I think that's a huge benefit, right? So that's a big benefit of being an early adopter is to be able to capture those top three placements with a very, very low bid and, and CPC cost due to lack of competition. Um, so lastly here, um, what is the, or how much investment is needed initially on Instacart, if you know? I don't think there's a minimum investment required. And I think when you get that ROI within a few weeks, you might be able to start with a, a very low budget and just test to see what it does. I think it's no secret when it comes to 2020, everybody was working with like leftover budgets. I mean, from campaigns that got canceled because of the pandemic. I, I really feel like a lot of brands approach Instacart with, you know, I have 10% of the budget from Amazon. I have 10% of the budget for Walmart. And this is what I want to do. This is where I want to take it and test Instacart. So just having that initial budget to start advertising on Instacart and then making a decision based on the ROI and based on the goals you have set, that might be a, the approach that ends up working for most brands. Great. That was... Uh... 
that that was very informative, Steph, and I really appreciate it. Um, next, what we're going to talk about is we have our Q and A, and I think the the chat's already been blowing up with a lot of really really good questions. So awesome. De Stefan, if you don't mind, I'd love to just read through them with you, and maybe we can offer the or um, get these answered really quick. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. cool. So the first question was, um, she said, sorry if I missed this, but can hyper target advertising get down to the geo banner location? Uh, basically, no, you, you're using keyword targeting, you're using keywords as the main target and the location, the zip code location is being determined by the person logged into Instacart and including that uh, zip code uh, they're searching for. This is how that inventory availability is being determined. But you, as an advertiser, you have control over the keywords you're going after. Awesome. And do you know what the required budget is to be able to use coupon promotion? Uh, I don't have an actual budget here, but I actually think we have a, a comment here and I, I did want to address this. This goes back to that question related to budgets. So if you talk to the Instacart salesperson, your Instacart partner, they are actually very open and they, these are the guys that can give you good guidance on the budgets when it comes to advertising or coupons or any sorts of delivery uh, promotions here. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I definitely, there. there's a lot of these questions that I would definitely reach out and and follow up with your Instacart salesperson on. They'll definitely provide a lot of guidance on on budgets and 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 benchmarks and and process stuff. Um, another question that we had here was: Does Packview provide the capability to track uh, SOV share of voice of a brand versus competition across retailers? And yes, Packview does offer that, um, and it's a very very um, awesome tool, awesome feature that Packview has. So um, feel free to reach out after the the presentation and we can show you that platform as well. So yes, Packy does offer the ability to, the capability to track SOV um, versus brands and competition. And they, someone asked, what's the best way to track your own share of voice and competitive SOV? Um, tracking it on your own is, I, that's a tough one. Um, I would always recommend possibly using an API partner that, that automates that information for you because tracking it on your own is a little bit difficult because I don't know if the, the reporting is quite there yet where you can um, really track it on your own. So definitely look at using an API partner of Instacart's like, uh, like, like PackView. Um, and then Stefan, a question here, if, and I'm not sure if you're able to answer this one, but are there any recommendations for using Instacart to promote categories that don't have UPCs, fresh meat, deli, et cetera? I don't think I, I have an answer for this one. I mean, you have to have uh, a product being listed on Instacart to add it to your campaign when it comes to self-serve and when it comes to feature products. Mm -hmm. So I would have to assume these products have to be available on Instacart for you to be utilizing advertising. Great. And then how do you know if your products are in the top three spots? So I would say, so three things, you will be checking to see if your bids are being competitive. You have to have that green uh, uh, spot that you mentioned that Instacart provides for you. Measuring share, I mean, you can always do a search from different zip codes and see if your products are being included in there. But the two things, to, to, two ways to make sure that your products are populating those placements are tracking share of shelf for that particular uh, search term for that particular keyword and see how much of that placement you own. And then making sure that your bids are competitive. So periodically checking to see if you are among the highest uh, green rated bids to be able to populate the, the placement. I mean, those would be the two things I, I, I see. Is my share of voice growing, declining, or remaining steady? And if I'm being competitive enough with my bids to be able to get displayed on those placements. Great. Um, one Another question here is says, have you seen any success with shared advertising campaigns? Meaning, have brands partnered with retailers to establish collaborative strategies to spend via Instacart advertising to encourage sales, or do most retailers prefer brands to run Instacart ads 100% on their own? Are there any other sorts of benefits you've seen retailers offer when brands are willing 
to invest heavily in Instacart's ads, if not collaboration on the campaigns and or spin? I think this is a great question. And I think this is part of the recommendation. I think that close collaboration between retailers and brands would be key to success here. Even when it comes to just, hey, I'm going to run Instacart advertising. Can you make like, can you let me know about inventory levels? How much do we have to sell? And what can you do on your end to reinforce this? To be honest, I haven't had a chance to have a discussion with both the brand and a retailer about some sort of cohesive strategy that includes both. But in theory, I think it's just a great idea. You have to have inputs from both the brand about how much they want to invest, where the budget will be coming from, and how success will be measured. And of course, you have to have the retailer you know, being able to uh, highlight those products, make it easier for uh, the Instacart shoppers to find and just being able to fulfill the orders from the traffic that you have going towards them. Great. Um, and then the share of shelf metric, this is something that's been asked, for, asked a couple of times here. Um, is, is there any share of shelf metrics or share of voice metrics available through Instacart's advertising platform through their UI, or do you need to use a tool like TagView? To be honest, the share of shelf one, I've only used it through PackView. And what I really like about it is you select the retail partner and then you measure share of shelf against it. I don't think the share of shelf in terms of entering a keyword, tracking it periodically day by day and seeing how much share of voice you have through it is available natively on Instacart at the moment. You know, it might be, uh, it might be something that they include in the future, but so far I think it's only through, uh, through PackView that I've used it personally. Great. Yeah, so um, again, I think this is another question. I would always, I would reach out to your Instacart salesperson, um, ask any further, um, you know, to your Instacart sales rep or whoever your Instacart contacts are and ask them um, for their information on that, as well as any guidance on, on budgets or, or or, you know, certain Instacart nuances as well. Um, one last question here, I believe, is does Instacart allow bidding for CPGs on paid search terms for specific retailers, or do we need to partner with the retailer to do this? If I understand this correctly, yes, they do. I mean, uh, basically your products are being sold across many retailers and you are bidding on keywords related to the products that are being listed for those. So this is definitely something you can do. I mean, to use an example, your products are available on Walmart, your products are available on all other family dollars, the latest one that they partnered up with. And you are able to bid on keywords related to your product, not necessarily the retailer per se, but definitely something that you can get exposure to because uh, a customer logs in, enters their zip code, and even chooses a marketplace, a partner they're searching for. So owning those keywords for the products that are being included in that retailer is definitely a possibility on Instacart. Great. Well, if uh, I believe that sums up all of the questions that were asked uh, through the Q&A as well as through the chat. So if anyone else has any questions um you can reach out to um um myself here's some contact information here um or step in and we'll, we'll gladly get you answered like we said we'll share the presentation after um with the attendees so we'll be we'll be sending that out as well as um, a recording to this webinar And if nobody has any additional questions, we will, um, I believe we'll let you get on with your day and uh, feel free to reach out to myself. My, my email is lukem at packview.com as well as here's the, some more contact information here as well.